Hey Doombots, Tony Skinjui here with a new video series uh, where I'm going to look at full and completed teams and determine a couple things about them. Mostly just an overall team review to give as many players as I can information about what the teams are, how early you can get them, how useful they are in the game, and what breakpoints they have. Breakpoints being what level you should get them to, what level is kind of a reach and should be avoided, how much investment they require. A lot of that becomes speculation, but these are all just my opinions anyway. And I figure, why not start with the first team that most players have access to in the game? We're going to start with Defenders. Now, leaning onto the availability part of the conversation it's pretty clear you even start with two of them. You begin the game with Luke Cage and Punisher. So that's two-fifths of a team right there. And even though Punisher is technically not a defender, the word defender does show up in a lot of his kit. He gets stronger based on the number of defenders he's in. And while a good independent character, he's probably better on the defender's team than not. So talking about the defenders in the early game, you have immediate access to Luke Cage and Punisher. Jessica Jones becomes a very early access character farm. No real notes on that. You can unlock her, I believe, at 15 shards. So she is a one star unlock character. And even though she doesn't do much for the defenders in the early game, she does increase the overall quality of the team. It does take until you get a pretty decent number of purple ability materials in her kit before she starts throwing out a proper amount of energy, starts clearing the right amount of debuffs, and even getting multiple attacks. The next character that you can farm from a node would be Iron Fist. He's available a little bit later than the other characters, but he still is node farmable, and once you get there, it's relatively easy to unlock him. Uh, he doesn't serve the purpose uh, that he's called for in the game early on. He's not quite the team healer that he could be, but he is an adequate damage dealer, and with the rest of the team comp, as you invest the proper ability materials and gear into him, he can become a phenomenal healer for the team without considering any tier fours you may eventually put up with them. The last character, of course, is Daredevil. The good news is Daredevil has recently been lowered to a 45 shard unlock, allowing access to the completed team at a very early stage. It's about nine days worth of farming in the arena store, assuming you start the day you gain arena credits the first time. But you should probably be able to have a completed defenders team within 10 days of playing the game. So availability, they are one of, if not the earliest complete teams you have access to. The second point will be usefulness. Now, the defenders, in addition to being one of the earliest teams you can access, are very useful for the early and mid stages of the game. They even have a little bit of utility in the end game. Now, what I mean by that, as the first team you can invest in if you put the proper amount of gear and levels and ability materials into them they can be your first raid team and they can carry you through a lot of the raids you're going to uh, be competing in in the early game u4 and u5 very easily able to be accomplished by the defenders team at a relatively low power level somewhere in the 60 to 70k range that team should be more than adequate to complete all of the U5 nodes. In the Greek raids, in the earlier stages, the Greek 1s and 2 raids, they don't have as many of the restrictions as some of the higher up ones do, and they are still an adequate raid team, especially once Iron Fist becomes the raid healer for the team, uh, and especially in any nodes where there are more villains, Punisher ends up doing extra damage and giving everyone else an extra damage boost. There is... A little bit of an issue with usefulness as you progress into endgame. They are an adequate team for completing Dark Dimension 1. 
That said, they do require six stars on each, and uh, while there are some places you can utilize a six-star defender's team outside of this, uh, for example, the block party event that shows up once every two months, they do take a lot of effort away from farming other characters that you may be interested in for legendary unlocks uh, or for access to other game modes, and their usefulness falls off a little bit to the... I want to say the mid-game. There's still an adequate team in the mid-game, maybe the end-game. So they are a phenomenal starting game team, and for that I would recommend if you do unlock them, whether by direct farming or through luck through some random orbs, uh, feel free to invest gear and ability materials in them. They will work adequately to accomplish early game responsibilities like climbing in the arena or completing whatever uh, low-level raids you're you're currently doing with your alliance once you get to the mid game you'll start realizing that as good as the defenders are at accomplishing a task they don't really help you build out your roster and as this game is first and foremost a wide roster game where the more characters you have the better off you're going to be in things like blitz which is how new characters and many characters are released as well as uh, war, where having one really good team in war is pretty okay, but you're going to be a one-trick pony, and you need a little bit more than that. Building a wide roster um, or building multiple different teams is going to help you overall kind of grow yourself and make yourself intriguing and, and useful to prospective alliances that may be looking for new and viable characters that will help you progress further. So that kind of ends the usefulness part of their conversation. They're an incredibly useful team with a lot of aspects they can do uh, throughout the entire game, but there are breakpoints. And, and for this, it's, it's a weird part of a conversation because I think anyone would understand the idea that, well, the more you put into a team, the better they are. Well, that's true. Any team at four or five hundred K is going to be a very good team when compared to teams that aren't at four or five hundred K. So breakpoints become a very simple solution of what the what's the least I can do to get the most out of them. As we've already discussed, the defenders are absolutely phenomenal at completing early game tasks, and they're relatively good up to even U6 but the investment becomes kind of the issue. Once you get to about 100k power defenders team, you definitely are getting a lot of value out of them. You may even be able to see that value grow from 100k to 150k, even maybe about 200k. Once you reach that point in investment, the diminishing returns start to hit really, really quickly. They're... they're not as direct a counter uh, to many teams in the game. There are teams that they absolutely do uh, defeat easily. Aim is one. Most teams that are primarily villains, with certain exceptions, and there's most importantly teams they are very capable of punching up against, where they don't need the power level as uh, high as the opponents are in order to defeat them. But when you look at a lot of the endgame content, and of course endgame content being dark dimensions as well as the most recent raids or anything like that you see that they do start to fall off at the 200k mark and it's a long time before they make up for that deficit whether that is because you didn't put enough gear into them maybe they're not all seven star maybe they need tier four ability materials they tend to take more ability materials and more effort than other teams that can do the things they do easier, cheaper, more affordably, however you want to break that down. So when it comes to breakpoints, the first is simply unlocking them. Once you have that team and you're able to put them up to a certain level, I always recommend when you're working on a team to make sure that as quickly as you can get them to 6664 uh, that's the bare minimum of a character investment, maybe even level 60 to 65, and gear tier 10, so you can start seeing them work the way they should. Now, this is an individual character conversation. 
This is team conversation. Once they get to that rate, you should see them at, at a range of power somewhere between 20 and 30K, making your team about 100 to 150K. Uh, without any tier four investment, you should have an adequate time completing pretty much all of the early to mid game tasks you need. Once you get to that 150 to 200K range on the team, it really just depends on what you're facing off against. But for most people I know with very high-powered defenders, there's a little bit more regret regarding uh, maybe other characters they could have invested in earlier. Maybe they had missed out on a legendary because they had spent extra time farming Iron Fist nodes or something along those lines. Uh, maybe they went a little too hard and spent Tier 4s in characters that didn't necessarily need them and it hurt them in Arena. Defenders are, like I said, one of the first teams many players get, but they're also the first team that becomes easily beatable in arena um, on defense. And if you've only invested in defenders, you quickly become outscaled by players, not only who are spending money, so whatever that means, but players who have spent less time on defenders and started working on characters like the Guardians or the Sinister Six, or in some cases, even AIM. I know it's crazy. But they become a little bit outscaled and unable to hold their defensive positions, let alone have a difficult time punching up. So while they are great in the early game and they should be able to help you hold a relatively high arena score, depending on how much you throw your investment into them, that is fleeting because every amount of energy you put into the defenders early is energy you're not using towards unlocking a legendary or an alternate team. And since they are kind of a spread of different skill, bio, and mystic uh, ability materials, you can start to see that uh, it, it taxes you a little. So for me, the breakpoints on the defenders are simple. 100 to 150k, that is a, a really good first level stopping point for the defenders. Um, I'm not saying you should always bring them up that high immediately. I'm saying if they are that high, it's probably okay for you to look into other farms without worrying too much about working on the defender specifically. Uh, if you do manage to get them through red stars or good luck or bad luck, depending on how you look at it, up to 200k, they really start hitting diminishing returns for a long time. I would even argue almost 100k worth of power as a 200k defenders and a 250k defenders aren't majorly different in what they can accomplish. They're all completing the raid nodes that they previously were. Uh, they're doing the arbitrary tasks in war that they were able to do. They're, they're balanced to that point, but they're not going to excel at anything. The defenders are functionally a the training wheels team of Marvel Strike Force. They are the first team that's supposed to introduce you to ideas like synergies and teamwork and how teams are designed to work with each other and the importance of designing and developing entire teams as opposed to individual characters. So as such, they're phenomenal at that. And if you do intend on investing over <laughs> into them, like a lot, you can probably get more dividends. You you know, if you have an entire max invested defenders team, you may be able to accomplish a lot of tasks. And that's great. If you really like the defenders, by all means do so. But at the same time, if those resources could have brought another team up to that level and gave you a little bit more uh, availability in war or availability on different raid lanes for gamma raids, Greek raids in general, you know, it's it's a balancing act. So by all means, defenders, overall rating, I'm giving them an A, almost an A plus team rating. You know, they're they're a good team. They are very useful throughout the game. They're very easy to access early and throughout the game. And they have some pretty good breakpoints. So there's no regret in having a 100 or 150k defenders team. They will be an adequate team for war and certain raids, but you don't need to push them beyond that point. They wouldn't call them an S team or among the best possible teams in the game, but they are a very adequate team and you shouldn't necessarily regret anything you've done into them so far, but always be aware of where your resources are going and maybe they might be better spent in other places. Anyway, comment below and let me know what you think, whether your defenders have been carrying you hard, whether you've already completed Dark Dimension, something like that. They're an adequate team and they 
do great things. And hopefully, uh, you found some success with them. But comment below and let me know what your defenders look like, like how strong they are, what are you constantly using them for, and, you know, stuff like that. And uh, stay tuned for the next video in the series where I will be going through every individual team based on kind of priority, like what I think people should know. Uh, eventually, we'll cover all the teams and, of course, get current with new teams as they come out. And we'll kind of assess that. But in the meantime, I want you guys to have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangili, and I'll catch you later.